Today we're going to discuss how to give a qualitative analysis to a two-dimensional system of differential equations. First, let's review some ideas from before about equilibrium points for two-dimensional systems. Recall that a two-dimensional system of equations is in the form dx dt equals f of txy and dy dt equals g of txy. We'll say that the system is autonomous if both f and g are not functions of time. A point, capital Y0, is said to be an equilibrium point if f evaluated at this point is 0 and g evaluated at this point is 0. This is so that capital Y of t, which equals to this point as a constant function, is called an equilibrium solution. We've seen a few examples of autonomous equations where we have found all of the equilibrium points. To begin, let's consider the predator prey model. This is a system of the form dx dt equals alpha times x minus beta times x times y, and dy dt equals negative gamma times y plus delta times x times y. We've seen that this system has exactly two equilibrium points. As a generalization, we can consider the logistic predator-prey model. This is just a predator-prey model, but we also include a carrying capacity. The carrying capacities in this case might be m sub x corresponding to the variable x and m sub y corresponding to the variable y. We found in this case that there are exactly four equilibrium points. We also consider the van der Poel oscillator. In this case, there's just one equilibrium point, namely the origin. And finally, we've considered the linear systems with constant coefficients. They are all in the form dx dt equals a times x plus b times y, and dy dt equals c times x plus d times y. Assuming that the determinant ad minus bc does not equal to zero, we found that there is just one equilibrium point, namely the origin. More generally, if we're given a linear system with constant coefficients, then we can classify all of the equilibrium points. We did so using the table that you see here on your screen. The idea is that the equilibrium points will either be saddles, sinks, sources, spiral sinks, centers, or spiral sources. Our motivating question is as follows. Can we make the same classification for equilibrium points associated to any two-dimensional system? The answer is essentially yes. Here's our main result. Say that capital Y sub zero is indeed an equilibrium point for an autonomous system, dx dt equals f of xy and dy dt equals g of xy. Then we can classify this equilibrium point via the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the following two by two matrix. Capital A is partial of f with respect to x evaluated at this equilibrium point, partial of f with respect to y at this equilibrium point, partial of g with respect to x at this point, and partial of g with respect to y at this point. You can see this idea with the graphic on the screen. In general, we have an idea of what's happening with the phase plane by simply drawing in arrows coming from the direction field. But if we zoom in to the various equilibrium points in the diagram, then we can see a better classification of these points. For example, for the one on the left, if we zoom in, we see that this equilibrium point corresponds to a saddle. For the one on the right, if we zoom in, we see that this equilibrium point corresponds to a source. But all of this is the description of what happens locally. That is what happens if we zoom in. Today, we give a qualitative analysis of what happens on the global scale, how we can put all of this together to find what happens for the big picture. As stated before, let's consider an autonomous system of the form dx dt equals f of xy and dy dt equals g of xy. Let's make this an initial value problem by saying perhaps x at t0 equals x0 and y at t0 equals y0. We found in an earlier course that the existence and uniqueness theorem asserts under some mild conditions on f and g, that there are unique solutions x of t and y of t to this initial value problem. We can sketch out the solution as a function of time using the slope field. 
The idea is that at every point x comma y, we can place an arrow f of xy and g of xy that tells us the direction our function will move in. In fact, using this concept, we can find an approximate solution as a plot of points x sub k, y sub k. Indeed, we found what's called Euler's method for systems as the following algorithm. First, fix a step size h. Second, we'll define points t sub k, x sub k, and t sub k, y sub k recursively as follows. t sub k plus 1 is t sub k plus h. x sub k plus 1 is x sub k plus f of xk, yk times h. And y sub k plus 1 is y sub k plus g of xk, yk times h. The idea here is that if we know a lot of information about the slope field, then we can either plot the solution or we can even get an approximate plot of the solution. But we'd like to know today, what are some strategies we can use to plot this slope field more effectively? Here we give an example of a logistic predator-prey model where if we plotted out on the left the phase plane and on the right the direction field. You can see that on the right, we've plotted in all of the various arrows, and by, roughly speaking, connecting the arrows, we can find the two different solutions that you see. However, we'd really like to have a much more detailed analysis, which is the phase plane over on the left. This is what we'll discuss today, different ways in which we can try our best to plot the phase plane. Recall that we say that x0, y0 is an equilibrium point if f of x0, y0 equals 0, and g of x0, y0 also equals 0. We have our main result for the day. Let's consider an autonomous equation of the form dx dt equals f of xy and dy dt equals g of xy. We give three statements. First, the slope field points in the direction 0, comma, plus or minus 1 for every point xy on the curve f of xy equals 0. The set of points we will denote by curly x. Notice that the slope fields point in a vertical direction for every point on this curve, curly x. In fact, the arrow points down if and only if g of xy is less than 0, and points up if and only if g of xy is greater than 0. The slope field points in the direction plus or minus 1 comma 0 for every point xy on the curve, g of xy equals 0. This set of points will denote by curly y. That is, every point in curly y gives the slope field that is in the horizontal direction. This arrow points left if and only if f of xy is negative, and it points right if and only if f of xy is positive. Finally, the point x0, y0 is an equilibrium point if and only if it is on the intersection between curly x and curly y. We call curly x the x null cline and curly y the y null cline. As a remark, notice that on x, we may have arrows that are either pointing up or pointing down. In fact, the direction of the arrow changes only at the equilibrium points. Similarly, for curly y, we'll have arrows that either point to the left or point to the right. These arrows change direction also only at the equilibrium points. For the rest of the time today, let's discuss an example. I'd like for us to return to this example of the logistic predator-prey model. First, let's try to compute the x null clines. That is, we're going to set the function f of xy equal to 0. Upon factoring, we find that there are two lines that correspond to setting this equal to 0. First is the vertical line, x equals 0, and second is the line, y equals negative x plus 2. These are the two x null clines. Next, we'd like to compute the y null clines. Here, we set g of xy equals to 0. Upon factoring, we find that there are two lines which give us the y null clines. The first is the horizontal line, y equals 0, and the second is the line, y equals negative 2x plus 3. We can plot these four lines on the graph that you see at the lower right-hand part of your screen. In fact, 
these lines intersect at exactly four points. Let me try to sketch y. First, let's consider the vertical line that corresponds to the x null line x equals zero. This will only intersect one of two curves, either the horizontal curve y equals zero or the curve y equals negative two x plus three. There's another point of intersection, you might argue, at zero comma two, but this is the point of intersection with x equals zero and the x null line y equals negative x plus two. We actually don't consider this point of intersection for an equilibrium point because the equilibrium points only correspond to when the x null clines intersect the y null clines. So by looking at the graph here, you can see that there's only four points in which this is the case. But we'd like to discuss how you place the up, down, left, right arrows on these null clines. So let's focus in a bit more detail on these four lines. First, let's consider the vertical line x equals zero. We see that there are only two equilibrium points on this line, namely at the origin and at zero comma three. By paying close attention to f and g, we notice that f equals zero because this is an x null cline, and g we can write as an explicit formula upon setting x equals zero. When x is below the origin, then we see that g is negative so that the arrows point downwards. When y is between the origin and the point zero comma three, we then see that g is positive, so the arrows point up. And finally, when y is above the point zero comma three, we see that g has to be negative so that the arrows point down again. Let's consider the next null cline when y equals negative x plus two. Here, we see that there are only two points on this line, namely one, one, and two, zero. Again, f equals to zero because we're dealing with an x null cline, and we can plug in y equals negative x plus two to find a simple formula for g of xy. When x is to the left of the point one, one, we see that g is positive so that the arrows point upwards. When x is between one, one and the point two comma zero, we see that g is negative, so the arrows point down. And finally, when x is to the right of the point two comma zero, g is positive, so the arrows point upwards again. Now those were the x null clines, so that our arrows were pointing either up or down. Now let's consider the y null clines. We found one curve, which is the line y equals zero. We notice that the only equilibrium points along this line are the origin and two comma zero. We also know that on the y no clines, g is equal to zero, so we can use this to find a simple formula for f of x, y. When x is to the left of the origin, f is negative, so that the arrows point to the left. When x is between the point zero, zero and two comma zero, we see the f is positive, so the arrows point to the right. Finally, when x is to the right of the point two comma zero, f is negative, so the arrows point to the right again. And finally, let's consider this last y null cline, namely y equals negative two x plus three. We see that on this line, the equilibrium points along it are only at zero, three, and one, one. And we can plug this back in for f to find that f has a rather simple form. And of course, g is zero because we're dealing with a y null cline. First, if x is to the left of the point zero, three, then f is positive, so the arrows point to the right. If x is between the points 0, 3, and 1, 1, then f is negative, so our arrows point to the left. And finally, if x is to the right of the point 1, 1, then f is positive, so our arrows point to the right again. This gives us a sense of which direction the arrows will move in in these various regions. And by paying closer attention to the arrows here, we can really derive the graph that we talked about a little bit earlier, that is here at the phase plane and the direction field. Thanks very much for watching.